Uh, similar vein, Aaron M. Holt uh, has been found to be facing a misdemeanor charge for violating a court order um, from his first wife. His first wife is Ashley. His second wife, the hot wife with Mercada, is uh, April. Ashley M. Holt had filed for a restraining order, um, alleging, among other things, physical violence. And at some point... Oh, sorry. I was uh, <laughs> I was I was spooked by chat. Just was suddenly running away. Uh, at some point, uh, he got a restraining order, and at some point, he violated it. So there is a misdemeanor charge against him. Uh, he's claiming that the charge is dropped, um, but there is an arrangement arraignment hearing for August. So he's saying that the charge is dropped, but yet there is still a docketed arraignment for him on August twentieth. So. Uh, which is right after the Ricada omnibus hearing, by the way. I think the omnibus is on April or August eighteenth. Uh, so he said he'll be addressing it on Monday. Whatever the fuck that means. He's getting charged for violating his restraining order. I don't know what needs to be discussed. Are you going to talk about your ex-wife more? That's weird. And by the way, this is the ex-wife of his, who has uh, is the mother of his children. So all those stories about how he had an amicable breakup with his ex-wife. He was taking care of his kids. Uh, Riketa came over with a bullet of cocaine that his son played with briefly that enraged him and got him to split off the uh, the uh, the relationship he had with Riketa. Like in the background of all this, while he's trying to paint himself as this you know divorced man who's getting on with his life and got caught up in a bad situation. Mean- meanwhile, as of January, he has a, a violation for. <laughs> Against him for his restraining order, so. Aaron went after his small audience today. Now even smaller audience. Huh. The, the weird thing is that Aaron is like this, like, microcosm of a different local culture that is, is like, kind of integrating into the big picture stuff that the Kiwi Farms and, and Co. keeps track of. Uh, by the way, Rakita did a stream with Juju. And I was told that it wasn't very interesting, so I didn't watch it. <laughs> there is clips of this on um, the Alyssa Clips channel, but and, and discussion about it in the the forum, but I, I didn't watch it. Like I just can't stand to listen to them anymore. I'm so poisoned towards them that when I hear them talk, it's just like, eh, I can't, I can't really. Unless I know that there's going to be something funny, I can't stand it. <laughs> I just I honestly, I just can't stand it anymore. That's Aaron. Uh, Riketa has had uh, the first motion in his case since the appellate court uh, kicked his case back down to the district level. Um, Randaza is still his attorney, despite um, some statements that Randaza had made regarding him on social media, uh, which is the most interesting thing about this. This is docketed for... Let's see, July 1st. So it should have happened. Is there any update to this? It's on Monday. I guess we don't get to to hear anything about this because there's nothing happened. So it's just a hearing, I probably a conferencing hearing to uh, set up the schedule for the trial. So it's probably not that interesting. Uh, the interesting thing is that it's it's back in motion. So Riketa is dealing with his criminal issues regarding uh, serious cocaine possession and negligence of the child, children. Uh, and now we know that the children had cocaine in their system. By the way, I got a lot of comments uh, when I talked about Riketa's cocaine test being positive. I had a lot of comments from people uh, who worked in labs, actually, thanking me for showing confidence in the lab testing system. Um, the people who commented were very confident that if the test showed that there was cocaine in her system, then she had ingested and metabolized cocaine. Um, I was told by these people that the hair is washed thoroughly, that the, um, the sample is tested under certain conditions. If it came back positive, they would have ordered a second test that in their professional opinion that if Riketa's if it, if it was found in a court document that the test 
was confident that there was a positive um, result for cocaine in the hair of a child, they would have uh, thoroughly checked their paces before issuing that result because the um, obvious uh, outcome of a false positive in that situation would be extremely damaging um, to not only the, the people involved, but the child involved. So the, the people that responded to me saying, yeah, I'm pretty sure that they got it right, uh, were, were very, uh, also very sure that they got it right. So that's, uh, it doesn't, it honestly doesn't look good. And when he messages me and he says that, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. The metabolite is one that is, um, a result of hydrolyzing with air moisture. Uh, it can be found on any sample of cocaine. A child could be lightly dusted in cocaine just by proximity. Um, it seems like that's a lie. Maybe that's a cope. I don't know. Maybe he wants to believe that's the case and that he doesn't want to believe that his own daughter, his nine year old, uh, ingested cocaine without his knowledge. Um, but I will say when I, I, I did a really deep dive into the cocaine thing, I was very curious about it. It's one of those things where it's like, I want to be informed before I make an opinion. I don't want to go out there and just bang the drum and say like, Ricade is such a bad man. I can't believe he did this. Like I didn't want to do like the moralizing grandstanding thing. Um, so I, I read multiple studies about the presence, about how hair testing works. And specifically there was one about cocaine in children and it was testing a Mediterranean city's uh, underprivileged, like like a drug testing lab. And these people that were in this clinic were in there for unrelated reasons to drugs, but they were all very poor. And they just randomly tested everybody's hair there. The, everybody who would consent, they would take their hair and the hair of their children. And uh, if the parent tested positive for anything, um, they would sometimes test positive for cocaine, even if they didn't admit to using cocaine. And if they tested positive for cocaine, there was like a 10% chance that their children would also test positive for cocaine. But it would be, but the, but uh, her, her result was a higher concentration of cocaine uh, metabolites than any of the, the, the studies kids. So, I mean, it wasn't a, a huge N number. It was like an N500 or something. But it's still like a lot. Like ten percent. There's a like to the point where, it, I think I said this in my first coverage of this, but it really underlines why a child protective service would test the kids to begin with. If it was unheard of that a child might be ingesting cocaine in a situation like this, then they would never test the children unless they had some kind of suspicion outside of the parents are doing it. If it never happened, they wouldn't bother. Like, what's the point of that? If it never, if it's, if out of a million cases of cocaine usage, uh, one child tested positive as well, then there would be no reason for the expenditure, but there is a reason. And it's because 10% of kids, if the parents are using also will have cocaine in their system. That's why they do it. Um, I mean, the government's evil, but it's not, it's not that stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how, that's how it comes across to me. So, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, it's so baffling to me. And, and even, I don't know, it makes me feel kind of like a dumbass, but even now I'm just kind of like, did he like become a retard? Did he like, did he decide to walk down the path of retardation sometime after we meet met? Or did I just like believe that he couldn't possibly be this fucking retarded at one point? Um, I don't know. I guess if I was fooled by his guile, I'm in a large group of people because 100,000 people watch Rikita at his, at his absolute peak. It's like, I don't know. Even now, it's like, I, I feel like he did, he deliberately chose this. Because I, I heard an expression once, and I, I'm, I'm quite fond of it. Uh, it's about how, it was, a, it was an expression about how the, the choices we make do have an impact on who we are. And even though it doesn't feel like it, because, you know, you make one choice, like, for instance, if you're trying to commit to a diet and you diet one day and then you fall off the wagon the next, you know, if you decide to keep off the wagon, that decides out who you are. But if you decide to start dieting again the next day, then it reinforces that positive behavior. And eventually your diet just becomes your lifestyle. Um, it, but it's a, it, who you are ends up, you know, is the end result of thousands of choices. And it makes me wonder, is Rakeda somebody who was just a bad apple? that very few people saw from the onset 
uh, or did he deliberately choose a bad path a thousand times over multiple years to become somebody uh, who was a bad apple? I, and I, I don't know. I, I have a copium in my head that he wasn't always bad and that he just chose poorly many, many times over years. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It, it frustrates me because I, I mentioned this on stream and shit, but it's like, why, why do I always end up like talking to people who are retards, you know? Um, yeah. You weren't the only one who fell for it. I know. It still doesn't feel good, though. Like, he, his kid has cocaine in her hair. She's a nine-year-old. She's a nine-year-old, and her brain chemistry is going to be permanently damaged by this. Like, Tetrabex, by the way, uh, who, as we know, uh, the, the our listener Tetrabex, who uh, apparently has an alcohol problem <laughs> <laughs> some some streams. Um, he was explaining in, in the Mad of the Internet thread that when he was a kid, he was diagnosed with ADHD and put on uh, Ritalin or some kind of amphetamine uh, ADHD treatment program when he was a, like a teenager, like a young teenager. And he says that that probably had a negative impact on his brain development, which is believable because if you give a child methamphetamine, or and, and, and it's not technically a methamphetamine, but it is an amphetamine salt, you give them that, it's going to fuck with them. You give a child cocaine, it's going to fuck with them. Um, all things, else, you know, everything else excluded. So it's just, it's just a, uh, just don't feel good, man. Just don't feel good. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.